So we are going to continue on in this folder and talking about the immune system. With our last folder, we looked at the innate system and some of the components of it. And you probably remember that this is the system that is in place from birth that allows you from the time of birth to defend your body against microorganisms. I mentioned when we first got into the immune system that there is a second branch, which is known as the adaptive branch. And that's where we're going to go today and spend the rest of our time in the immune system. So a little bit about this branch. One of the things that I said about it um, when we first started into the immune system is that it is not fully functional from the time of birth, but it is adaptive, meaning that once you're born, it begins to adapt to recognizing the microorganisms that are out there that are in your environment. One of the things that's also really unique about this particular branch is it is specific. So what I mean by that is it is able to tell a virus from a bacterium. It doesn't see things as just foreign and harmful, but I don't necessarily know what it is. It recognizes them. It's also able, for example, to tell one virus from another. So for example, it could tell human papillomavirus, HPV, from human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, from varicella virus, which causes chicken pox. And in addition to being able to recognize those different viruses, it has different cells that are parts of this particular system that are going to fight each one of those individual viruses. It's also capable of telling bacteria from each other. So it would be able to tell the difference between a staphylococcus and a streptococcus and a tuberculosis bacterium. And once again, it's going to have specific cells that are actually adapted to go after each of those bacteria. So again, today we're just kind of getting an introduction to the adaptive system so that we're really prepared next week to kind of get into this system more and some of the specifics and the cells that are involved in it. One of the things that you should know at this point though about this particular system, the adaptive system, is it has a couple of branches to it. So the first of these branches is what's known as the humoral branch. And humors is an old term, kind of an old fashioned term for body fluids, meaning things like lymph, things like blood. So the humoral branch is the branch of the adaptive system that's functioning in body fluids. It's, it's functioning in the blood, it's functioning in the lymph. We talked when we first got into the innate system about the fact that some viruses can actually get into cells of the body and take over the cells and cause them basically to become a virus factory. Once a virus or a bacterium or another microorganism is actually inside another cell, it's capable of hiding from the humoral branch. So the humoral branch is only going after things that are floating around out in the open, if you will, in the blood and in the lymph. But because, as we've already established, some things are able to get inside of cells, we also need a cell-mediated branch of this system to go after those things that are hiding out in a cell. And that's where this cell-mediated branch comes in. So this is really kind of a basic introduction to the adaptive system, what it does, the fact that it has a couple of different branches, what I want to do now is continue on with just some basic introductory information to help you understand how this particular system is kind of working in general before we start getting into the specifics of the different branches. So with this particular slide, I want to talk a little bit about self-antigens. And it's probably important before we do to establish why self-antigens are actually needed. I mentioned with the adaptive system that it's capable of telling what things are foreign to your body and it's actually capable of differentiating between all of those foreign things. But if we're going to be able to tell that something is a tuberculosis bacterium, for example, we need to be able to know or be sure that we know what tuberculosis bacterium looks like compared to what the cells of your own body looks like. So one of the things that we have functioning in the adaptive system are what are known as self antigens, and they are going to help the adaptive system recognize what's you from what's something else. 
um, that may be in the body, a streptococcus bacterium, some other cell that actually is foreign and shouldn't be there. So here's a little bit about self-antigens. They are just small proteins that are on the outside of your cells that denote your cells as a part of you. So all of us have these little proteins that are of slightly different shapes because none of us are genetically identical unless you have an identical twin and then they would have these exact same self-antigens with the, sub, the same shape um, as you do. These self-antigens are not foreign, they're not antigenic to you, but they would be highly antigenic to anyone else. So you may be familiar with um, organ transplants. And one of the things that we always have to worry about with an organ transplant is that that organ is going to be rejected. What that means basically is that the host, so the person who received that organ, their body and specifically their immune system recognizes the self antigens on the donated organ. Because if it's a donated heart that comes from me to you, that heart is going to have my self antigens on all of its cells. And if your immune system isn't suppressed through medication, what's likely going to happen is at some point, it's going to recognize those self antigens as not a part of you. So your self antigens denote you as you, they are specific to you, so yours look like nobody else's on earth unless you have an identical twin, but those same self antigens are highly antigenic to anyone else. Somebody else's immune system would recognize them as not a part of them as something that's foreign and because it's foreign it's something that's potentially harmful so one of the things that i want you to know about these self antigens is that they are displayed on what are known as mhc proteins so that stands for major histocompatibility proteins if you look at this picture over here i've tried to draw kind of a simplified drawing of maybe some cells that are in my body and I'm using this picture of me okay, to denote my self antigens. And right here, we've got that MHC protein. So the self antigen is displayed, it's attached to this MHC protein. I very often think of the self antigens as a flag and the MHC protein as a flagpole. And basically what we've got going on in our body is at all times is we have immune system cells that are crawling over all of our cells and they're looking for these MHC proteins and what the MHC proteins are actually displaying. And as long as they see our self antigens, that lets them know, hey, this cell is good, it's okay. It's a part of our body. When they come to a cell that is displaying something different on its MHC protein, so what you would see here, for example, that doesn't look like the rest of the self antigens, that's going to let the immune system know that that's a cell that is foreign, that's not a part of us. Because of that, it could potentially be harmful and it's something that likely should be destroyed. So with the last slide, we started talking a little bit about MHC proteins. And now I wanna give you some additional information about these MHC proteins. So there are actually two types of MHC proteins that we find on the cells of the body. The first of these is what's known as a class one MHC protein, and these are found on all cells of the body. The only exception to this would be red blood cells. So they're found on muscle cells, they're found on nerve cells, they're found on the cells of your organs, on skin cells, basically every type of cell in the body has these with the exception of red blood cells. Here's my representation of a cell in my body that has a class one MHC. So this is a healthy cell. This could be my liver cell or my bone cell or an organ cell or whatever, but here's that class one MHC. And as long as this is a cell that's healthy, and what I mean by that is it's not taken over by a virus. It's not harboring something that could potentially be harmful to the body. As long as this is a healthy cell, on its class one MHC, it's going to display self antigens. Now remember that viruses and some bacteria can actually get into the cells of our body and can actually take those cells over. And when they do so, those viruses or whatever it happens to be is going to inject some of its DNA into the host cell DNA 
And what that means is if this is a cell in my body, we could even say it's this cell, and it has become infected, now we've got viral DNA in my cell. And that viral DNA is going to change the shape of the cell antigen that's displayed on the MHC class one. And all of a sudden, that flag that's displayed, if you will, or the self antigen that's displayed on the class one MHC is going to look very different than a self antigen. So that when an immune system cell crawls over it, it's gonna see, hey, this is not self. This looks different from what should be displayed on class one MHC in a healthy cell. And that's gonna let the immune system know this is a cell that has been taken over. This is a cell that's not healthy this is a cell that we need to destroy because it's going to potentially be harmful to the body. We also have a second type of MHC protein that's found on some cells of the body. So these are what are known as class two MHC proteins and they are found only on very specific cells that are a part of the immune system which are known as antigen presenting cells or APCs. APCs effectively are the policemen of the body, if you will. So they're traveling throughout the body, they're traveling through your lymph, traveling through your blood, traveling through your tissues, looking for pathogens, things that are potentially foreign and therefore harmful to the body. And when they find something that they believe to be foreign and harmful, what they're going to do is they're going to engulf that thing through phagocytosis, they're going to digest it, and then they're going to spit up some of the proteins from that foreign harmful substance onto their class two MHC proteins. So if you look at this picture down here, this is a representation of an antigen presenting cell or an APC. Like all other cells of the body, antigen presenting cells have the class one MHC, that is going to display the self antigens. However, when an APC has encountered something in the body that it determines to be harmful and foreign, it's going to phagocytize that substance and then spread out, spit out, excuse me, proteins from that substance and display them on the class two MHC. The reason for this is when these APCs find something that is harmful, they are going to approach another immune system cell, which is known as a helper T cell. And they are going to show the helper T cell the substance that they've found in the body that's harmful. Helper T cells are kind of like the generals. So they're gonna see this potentially harmful thing that's displayed on the class two MHC proteins of the APC, and they're going to make a decision whether we activate the entire immune system against it or whether it's something that's actually harm, harmless. But if you think about an APC that has phagocytized a bacterium or a virus or something else that it found in the body that's harmful, and it's now displaying proteins from that harmful substance on its class two MHC, it's very important that we also have the class one displaying self antigen, because when that helper T cell sees this APC, when this APC displays its antigen, its harmful substance to the helper T, we want the helper T to first see the self antigen on the class one MHC so it can say, okay, same team, um, this is a good guy, I don't wanna destroy the APC because I know it's a part of my body, but it's also showing me that there's something that's harmful and foreign in the body that looks like this. If you have some type of microorganism invader in the body, there's not just one, there's hundreds, thousands, potentially even millions. And so we want to let the immune system know, this is what it looks like. You need to be on the lookout for it. If you see it, destroy it. And alerting helper T cells to the presence of this substance is the first step that we have in kind of coordinating and activating the entire immune system against harmful microorganisms. But again, really important when an APC is doing that alerting that it has the class one MHC, that it has a self antigen that it can display so that the helper T doesn't think the APC itself is actually a cell of the body that has been taken over by a microorganism.